Well, good day to you, no matter where you happen to be. My name is Mike Fitz with explore.org. And uh, you may know me from such films as uh, Brown Bears, Love to Eat Salmon, and, uh, and Bear Denning and Hibernation. But today, I'm going to be uh, talking about a different topic. I'm going to be talking about bald eagles. And I'm joined uh, with John Howe and Amy oh. Reese from the hey. Raptor Resource Project. Thanks for joining me today. So, and I had a, a neighbor just visit me. Um, I, I don't know if you heard the dog barking, but there. Uh, so hopefully it, it didn't drown out too too much of my I'm my narrative. Like a hundred pounds. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, because right now across North America, uh, bald eagles are are nesting, and they're dealing with some fairly challenging uh, springtime uh, and late winter conditions, and they show a lot of adaptations and resiliency to survive this uh, challenging time period. Uh, and, and John and Amy are with a nonprofit organization called the Raptor Resource Project. And can you tell me just a little bit more about uh, your organization and its mission? Yeah, so uh, Raptor Resource Project started out captively breeding peregrine falcons for repopulation repopula after uh, DDT, uh, just like the bald eagle. And then amazingly, with the education program and outreach uh, and the movie American Eagle, the Decor Eagle Cam came of being and went viral back in 2011. So um, the use of cams for education um, and really, you know, getting that out, we've got an active education program for classrooms. So generating interest in, in helping develop the next generation of conservationists. That's probably a big, big part of what we're doing right now. And today specifically, I think we want to uh, focus on uh, some of the uh, some of the birds that we can see on your cams on explore.org. Uh, there are bald eagles nesting across North America. Some of them are nesting right in snow, getting buried in snow. Uh, so they uh, do show some some pretty interesting adaptations to surviving um, the these uh, these cold conditions, uh, but for for people who might not be familiar with bald eagles, can you give us a little bit of an overview of just their overall size? They are one of the largest raptors in North America, correct? Yep, absolutely. Right, right. and size weight. Weight distribution, different oh, male to female. Male to female, yeah. The males are a little smaller. Uh, the, Seven to twelve pounds. Yeah, I want to say I want to say the males are. You're going to see them like maybe eight to ten, and the females maybe nine to twelve. So somewhere in there, there's a little bit of overlap. I'm, I'm, I'm right. sorry. Questions like how big is something? I can say big. I tend right. to be bad on saying how many yeah. pounds it is. And female about thirty percent larger. Yeah. And I think that that ratio is the same, you know, across the country. Yep. Even though. The northern eagles tend to be larger than the southern eagles in the warmer climates. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention that if if you, if any of the audience members out there do have questions for John and Amy, please feel free to drop those comments in the chat. Uh, we'll be happy to try to answer those later on in the program. We'll be sticking with you for about a half hour uh, this this uh, this morning or afternoon or evening, no matter where you happen to be. Uh, so raptors, are, uh, these eagles are fairly large raptors. Um, it is tough to, to generalize about, about their overall weight because there can be so much variation across North America. Uh, but they, uh, they are one of the conservation success stories of the, the late 20th century. Um, so right now their populations, populations are fairly healthy. And in, in your uh, area, um, are you seeing uh, you know, uh, healthy numbers of eagles? They are, and, and they've been on the rebound here uh, for a while. Um, I think Amy had probably uh, uh, mentioned this too, but uh, typically around riverine systems, you know, eagles eating fish, but yep. uh, seeing actually populations probably much more than they used to be um, in the rural areas, just with the farming and uh, there's some concentrated farming activities and things like that that are adding food sources uh, and making it possible for them to go places that they typically hadn't been as as much in the past. And the original population before they 
were more or less extirpated by DDT in this area, uh, appeared to be a lot more shy of humans. So if you look at historical records and people talking about eagles, they were really a little wary about us, probably because we used to do things like shoot at them. They return in right. a, a vastly changed landscape with a lot more people uh, with laws against harming them or even really disturbing them too much. So they become a lot more accepting of people uh, and a lot more tolerant of living near people. So we, yeah, I, I think that's something I've noticed with um, other species of wildlife too, is if we give them space um, and we give them protections and they're able to sort of adapt to our presence, not all animals, but many, many species uh, mm -hmm. thankfully have have that ability because uh, humans are increasingly modifying the world. But one thing that eagles have to deal with, of course, that uh, that is sort of outside the influence of, of, of humans is, is weather. Um, and right now, um, eagles are, are nesting um, in some quite challenging conditions. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the physical adaptations that eagles might have to deal with cold conditions, especially uh, sub-freezing conditions that they might experience right now. You want yeah. to take feathers? Uh, sure, sure. So uh, the feathers really, you know, have to be, I think, the one of the primary, the major uh, components as far as being able to survive the cold temperatures up here in the north. Um, just the structure of the feathers and the type of feathers. So if you can imagine the layered effect of having all the down feathers, uh, I mean, just like us having a down coat, right? Yeah. The down feathers close up to the body and then the feathers actually uh, um, having different components. Uh, some of the feathers have down right up against the base of the quill where it's inserted into the flesh and then it grades out to more the, the actual feather that you see. So the feathers, uh, their ability, the feather actually can uh, beat up water and uh, it's hydro, hydrophobic basically, if the technical term, um, to stop water from coming in and, and reducing that insulative, the insulative properties of the feathers that light fluffy down. Um, the eagles can control air movement with the feathers by either uh, pulling them tight to their body uh, and becoming more sleek, or they can rouse and kind of fluff them up and 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 actually just expand the insulative layer that they've got of the feathers. So some neat control that they have there. Um, the other thing with feathers, I think too, is that uh, the the temperature gradation. If you take a look at an eagle while it's being covered with snow, or just the snowflakes are coming down. The heat loss is so, so small coming. They're so well insulated that, and they can control that, but when they're in insulative mode with their feathers, uh, there's a really neat picture that's just being put up there showing mom decora uh, in the evening during one of the snows that came in. And we see that by just the, the snow comes down and for hours upon hours, even all night, um, that none of the snow is melting. That just shows how efficient they are in keeping warm and and conserving all that energy that they've got inside 100, 100 plus degrees yeah. internally. Yeah. And now I used to say, I wish my house was insulated that well. Right. Right. <laughs> so, and the other really cool thing is just their blood flow to the extremities and their core. Amy can talk about that. So they have basically do counter current uh, heat exchange in their legs and then they also, if it's really cold, will shift their blood flow a lot like we do. So if you're mm -hmm. outside and it's cold and you start to shiver, your blood flow will shift towards your core. They do that as well. So that also helps them retain more heat. And because they have more blood flow around their stomachs, uh, it helps them to gain more calories, more nutrients out of the food that they're consuming. So that's another important part of it as yeah. well. Their legs yeah. don't get cold. They keep their legs, their leg muscles under their feathers. They counter current heat exchange and they change their blood flow. So all of those things yeah. help. Right. And the components, you know, of the, that their body is made of, um, the feathers made out of uh, organic material, not water. So uh, very little. Um, talons you think about that it's like oh my gosh they're getting so cold the beak area which is made out of uh you know the the more uh the keratin, keratin tissue so uh the lack of water there with a lot of those tissues really doesn't matter if they get close to freezing 
Um, so they don't feel that like their fingers going numb, their talons are not getting numb. They don't have that kind of water component like we as mammals do, humans. It, it is sort of amazing to think about. Uh, you, you know, humans have a little bit of those adaptations. We have a tiny bit of the like counter curtain exchange in our, in our hands and our legs. But, but not very much. And we don't really have a lot of insulation compared to other animals. So we're essentially like still tropical critters. Uh, right. That's why we keep all of these clothes around us, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Someplace warm. We build uh -huh. big houses, uh, you know, to, to keep us warm. We wear a lot of clothing. Uh, but these animals out, out in the world don't have those the same, the same options. So thinking about feathers, thinking about their countercurrent exchange, uh, some really amazing adaptations. And those are physical adaptations though, but eagles are also showing uh, behavioral adaptations to cold weather. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, anybody who watches the camera knows that when that temperature drops, we were talking about this earlier yeah. and John brought this up, those eagles yeah. disappear. We just don't yeah. see them. And that's because they're hunkered down somewhere in a microclimate, right. they're staying still, they're conserving their energy. Right. And that that's probably more so when they're not incubating or nesting and sitting on eggs. That when, when the egg, first eggs are laid, I mean, that totally changes the behavior. They really, they don't have a choice, uh, but beyond those eggs. So that's, that would be a major deviation and problem with them coming off the eggs. Um, but we when they, they seem to hunker down in that really cold weather. And, um, with the other, the, the other Eagle of the pair, um, a lot of times they're, they're nesting close by. Um, but before the eggs come, we just don't see them. Yeah. They go and they, they find some spot to disappear to, and it's probably something a little bit more out of the, the elements, if you want to call it that. Yeah, so they conserve energy, they hunker down, uh, they move around as little as possible, and even in, incub in incubation, they're not moving around very much. And then if they're off territory, they'll congregate in large groups. Uh, they can follow one another around, they can right. steal from one another, so that makes finding food a little bit easier and a little bit, it exhausts a little bit less energy. And then they also gorge their food. So partially right. another eagle won't steal it, uh, right. and they'll get it down as quickly as possible so they get you know as much nutrients as possible in, in as short a period right. of time as they can. And they got the reserves, so, uh, and they've got the crop, you know, or snack pack as the kids <laughs> like to call it. Uh, so they basically have got that reserve that when food is available, they can take as much in as possible, gorge, whatever, and, and then they've got those reserves to get them through. Uh, if they have to be sitting there conserving energy, they've got the food and, and the resources to do that. Yep. So the adults seem quite tolerant uh, of cold, but that might not necessarily be the case for, for young uh the, like the eggs and, and the hatchlings. So uh, I'm curious to know, well, why would an eagle, for example, uh, you know, start to begin nesting at a time of the year where their, their eggs could uh, potentially freeze if they're, they're left unattended and they could hatch, you know, during sub-freezing weather as well? We think it has to do with how long they're in the nest uh, and then how long it takes them to achieve some level of independence. So we're going to start looking at bad weather coming in maybe in September, October, you know, maybe November. These eagles spend, what is it, it's you know, 35, 40 days until hatch, and then right. 75 to 80 days in the nest, and then they have a learning period beyond that. So that eagles lay their eggs early, first of all, means that they can take uh, advantage of kind of a seasonal flush of food right. when the eaglets are hatching. But beyond that, it gives the eaglets a very long time to spend in the nest to fledge and then to spend time honing proficiency and really learning how to hunt uh, and how to fly versus, hey, I have wings, look, I'm flying. Right. So we think it's because they have really an extraordinary long life cycle for a bird. Right. Uh, and it's strategic. Period. I mean, we found out what uh, at our North Nest last year with a second clutch of eggs, the, the devastating effects that can happen when the eggs are laid just three, four weeks afterwards. Um, and that eaglets were hatching right when the black flies were coming out and that that ended up in the eaglets uh, living for about a week before they before they uh, perished but so um, Yeah, the other thing too is just the whole cycle of things up here yeah. with the seasons So you see nesting activities in the south where it's warm all the time happen much earlier Their their eagles down there are getting ready to fledge right now so um, that's interesting how the, the temperature zone 
in the North America, you know, where you are in the country and the seasonal effect of that changes when the eagles are going to lay eggs, when they're right. when they're fertile, and then when their young are hatching and then fledging before dispersal. Right. And in Florida, there's also some thought. So the Fort Myers eagles in southwest Florida, are they're almost tropical, really. And they have a lot flatter light cycle than we do. Our light cycle kind of goes like this, and theirs kind of goes like this. So there's some thought that the real trigger for photoperiodism in more tropical birds is actually light intensity. And if you look at weather down in South Florida, you'll see in the summer, it's the rainy season, it's cloudy, hurricanes come in, where the, you have the most light intensity, uh, kind of in what we would consider to be the off season. And yeah. there's some thought that that's also a driver of their behavior, which is really different than what we see in Northern Eagles. That's, that's fascinating. Uh, you know, we see, you know, you can't, it, it's hard to sometimes lump the behavior of an animal a species into you know one category or another because there is such a wide variation, especially in a species that's spread basically from from Alaska all through Canada down to Florida and and and, and beyond. So, yeah, uh, you know, this is kind of related to um, you know one of one of our questions, but it's also one that's that's come up in the queue from um, from viewers who are are wondering. Um, but so how do eagles, um, you know, protect their chicks during the first few weeks of life? Why do they, um, why do they, they sit on them after, after they've hatched? Is that an adaptation uh, to help them su to survive cold or behavioral adaptation? Yeah, the, that, that's really, and this goes with the eggs too. Um, we got a really neat picture of mom Decora's brood patch um, just last week. And uh, they actually will remove the feathers in that area. You can see in the picture that's there. You can see bare uh, eagle flesh there, and that's her brood patch. Uh, Amy said she thinks that that's the first time what we've actually. It's the first time we've picture. seen a picture. Although we don't think that they deliberately move their uh, remove their feathers like a duck or a goose plucking down. It appears that hormonal changes in their body cause that molt to happen naturally and possibly rubbing up against. So fascinating. A surface yeah. will do that. That yeah. that I'm only bringing that up because uh, that gets, I guess, I would say, debated a lot. <laughs> yeah. So so with the eggs and with the young eaglets that have just hatched, they're very vulnerable. They've got that fluffy down. That's why everybody likes to see right when they hatch and they're so fresh so and young cute. like that. But <laughs> they will come down and they will tuck them in, and you see them very carefully ball up their talons and just carefully rocking back and forth and they're looking down and they're making sure that they're placing those in the right area and then they'll start lowering down and they'll kind of it's it i always love that when you see the eagle anchor their beak you know in the nest and then yeah. they start doing the shuffle with their their feet and their talons under and really they're positioning those eggs or the young eaglets right up against that warm brood patch area um, so uh, that that's really the critical factor. Um, they're keeping them dry. They're keeping them warm. Yep. Um, they're protecting them from the elements. And sometimes we'll see the eagles. I think it was just yesterday. I saw one of the eagles. It almost was like she was keeping the yes. the, the area around the eggs dry by spreading her wings out. And you could see the water water droplets from the sleet coming down in the rain and oh, they're okay. just balling up on her and but that's stopping water from coming down into the nest in the first six eight inches around where that egg cup is there's a nice picture being shown of the water beads beating up on on uh, the the feather surface there it's also helpful to remember that an adult eagle's body temperature is around 105. They can actually manipulate it a little bit, but it's around 105. And perfect temperature for brooding eagle eggs, we think, is around 99 degrees based on work done the American Eagle Center. Uh, and so they have heat to burn. So when they sometimes get up and leave the eggs for a little bit, that really is okay because the eggs can get too warm. Too warm is also a danger. So they really right. control temperature by, by, you know, certainly by rolling them, by shifting them around, by getting off them and so on and so forth. That's all very normal behavior. Yeah. And I and think, are, Mike, are eggs... leading... go ahead. You're probably leading into this, but then once they get to be about two weeks old, then that that fluffy down starts changing into thermal down, and they get to the point where uh, they're larger, for one thing. It's a little harder oh, for the parents yeah. to cover them up, and they get to the point where they can be left uh, unattended as far as 
uh, being protected temperature wise uh, when that thermal down comes in at about 15 days. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely a, a question in, in our queue here. The, uh, what point are the young birds able to maintain their own body temperature? Uh, so, so thanks for, for getting uh, at that. Um, but maybe I'll, I'll backtrack just a little bit to the eggs uh, for a moment. It seems like the, the eggs have uh, more, uh, I guess, more tolerance of cold conditions than they do for really hot conditions. If they rise above, like you mentioned, Amy, that 105 you know, degree temperature, perhaps that's, that's too hot for them. Um, really in development, but how, they have cold tolerance. So, so they'll suspend, you know, if okay. you think of like the eggs in your refrigerator, which probably aren't fertile, but they'll suspend real early in development very well. If you get later in development, and we've seen this and you brought this up as well, mom and dad, uh, uh, mom and DM2, an eagle male and female are right. always on those eggs because once they hit a certain point in development, they, you know, they, they don't suspend well. Right. And uh, not so much in, in eagles, but we see that it even more pronounced with peregrine falcons and that is the delayed incubation yeah. um it, they don't really start even full incubation until three eggs are laid so there's a vulnerable time period there probably even more more of an issue with peregrine falcons than than eagles although they're typically in this region they're laying their eggs a little bit later yeah. in the year so it's not typically going to be a factor uh, with that delayed incubation, but they hatch a little bit closer with the delayed incubation. Um, but eagles will sit off those eggs for a little bit, and they see, like Amy said, they'll be t they're they're tolerant to that while there's really not a developed embryo in inside that egg. And if you're joining the chat just a little bit late, I'm going to reintroduce uh, everyone here. Uh, my name is Mike Fitz, a resident naturalist with Explore.org, and I'm joined today with uh, John Howe and Amy Reese from the Raptor Resource Project. They're a partner with explore.org. Uh, so you can check out the Decora Eagle cams. They have many other uh, bird nesting cams scattered across North America. So really fascinating to get to uh, some insight into the behavior of these animals that we might not be able to observe closely otherwise. I think we do have just a, a few more minutes left in our, our chat. So John and Amy, if you wanna uh, take a few viewer questions, we, I can throw those uh, your way. Yeah, right on. Let's All right. Take a look here and see. Okay, I see them here. So let's yeah. take a look. And I Here's was, you know, one of the questions, one of the questions that I, that I was looking at um, was uh, could eagles from, California's warm weather, or even Florida, you know, we talked about eagles in Florida just a little bit earlier okay. in the chat. Could they, could they survive in, you know, sub-zero weather? Uh, it seems for, like with people, it takes a little bit of acclimating to, to get used to that. Um, but what about yeah. animals that don't have the ability to put on gloves or a hat um, or hunker down indoors yeah. like we can? Yeah, well, that's a good point. It's a really good point. My guess would be, and this is a guess, like hashtag musing, right? Um, I, I suspect an eagle could, I suspect it could survive if the only question was uh, its physicality. Would it know how to hunt? Uh, would it change its reproductive timing? If you brought a nesting eagle from Florida up into Minnesota, yeah. I assume it would still be uh, attuned to an earlier uh, nesting chronology. So... Yeah, Those I would think questions. the eagle could survive. Uh, I, I would think uh, not as well, not as efficiently. It's it doesn't have that larger size, yeah, which we believe is point. an ad ad adaptation for colder weather and and needing to to get beyond those time periods where there's a storm and and food isn't as available and they need to uh, get through that period. So um, I would think that uh, just surviving would be possible as long as the weather is not really right. bad and and it's like oh there's water and there's fish in there um if it's by the fish hatchery that probably make it easier for them but just the fact of you know uh you know the the patterns of, of food uh gathering and scavenging here is roadkill and things like that so they probably are habituated to look at roads and see yep. that and see other other raptors gathering whether it be turkey vultures and things like that eagles out on the coast you know, I don't know how much they get for food sources from like roadways and things like that, but their ability probably to, to 
see and find a uh, food source probably is going to be a big factor there. Right, and whether or not they could be reproductively and trained to a new cycle is for somebody beyond yeah. my yeah, They're, they're going to say, what is, that, what is that glass layer, that ice layer on the water? And I wonder if they would try to, to uh, um, kind of get into it. fish. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it looks like a water body, but I can't get past this barrier here. That would be a totally new thing for them. That'd be interesting to see. And what about uh, migration uh, with eagles? You know, we talked about some of the, the physical and, and behavioral adaptations that they have to the cold earlier, uh, but we didn't really touch on that. Not all eagles are residents in specific areas. Some of them will right. migrate as well. And do you, do you see that like along the, the Mississippi River uh, corridor? Oh, absolutely. You yeah. should just talk about yeah. the flyway cam. <laughs> yeah, so one of the reasons we put the Mississippi River flyway cam up was watching the the waterfowl, the tundra swans, and pelicans and eagles. Just the the migratory pathway there to to see that from the bluff when we're monitoring the falcons. So um, ha actually having a camera out in the flyway, uh, out on Lake on Alaska by close to La Crosse, Wisconsin, we get to see that migration. But you're right, we've got resident eagles, and then we've got um, and those are the ones that, that probably are nesting and they're staying year round because yeah. they're nesting and creating uh, young. And then there's the others that don't. And we've got monitors and, and satellite radio transmitters on, on the eagles. And uh, we know in the summer time period that they're going all the way up to uh, uh, Hudson Bay area. We just had uh, um, our D27 eagle. Uh, she has gone up to mid Canada, just about in that same yeah, Western latitude. Ontario, but the same um, latitude. So in the summer months, well, they're going up north uh, because of the, the the hotter weather for them, and then in the wintering time period, they're going south, uh, right. um, down into probably like the Missouri, Ohio area. And some of them are coming from Canada, are coming down just to this. Yeah. This area and wintering not too far away from here, I, I, I think. Yeah, so they tend to be, and they're somewhat variable. So we've seen two of them, D1 and D27, that have made these huge, giant uh, looping, well, migrations anyway, maybe right. not looping migrations. But we also have one D24 that we believe has stuck closer to home the entire time. Um, you'll see, like John had mentioned, you know, sometimes eagles will fly around uh, until they're about four and a half years old and settle down. Sometimes they spend a lot longer as floaters, which would be reproductively able right. but non-active adults. So they're really quite variable in their behavior, and it's one of the things that makes them interesting. Besides just that they're totally cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we, and uh, parts of North America that I've lived in, uh, like Alaska, eagles will have a bit of a... Uh, a short migration. Um, so they won't necessarily like leave the entire area. They won't be going from northern Ontario, for instance, you know, down to the to the Mississippi River. But what they'll be doing is they'll be leaving the, the middle of Katmai National Park, flying to like the edge of the Bering Sea or flying to the edge of the Pacific where they can find open water. So we touched yeah. on all of these uh, adaptations that they have to, to cold weather. I mean, they can handle it. They can handle sub-zero weather really uh, no problem. It's, it's really the fact, the, the fact that they need to find food. I mean, that seems to be right. one, of the, one of the main bottlenecks. So if you can find food, you can make a living if you're an eagle. Yep. Yeah. All right, and we're, we're um, about uh, 30 minutes in, and I think that's as much time as we can uh, devote to eagles today, although I think we could probably talk about the animals for, for hours on end. Um, but <laughs> I, I, sure. I, I would like to... <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, I would like to thank uh, John and Amy uh, from the Raptor Resource Project uh, join, for joining me this afternoon. Great organization. Check out their website, raptorresource.org. You can um, find the links to all of their, their webcams directly on their website. You can also go to explore.org um, and find many of the, the webcams uh, directly on there. It's an exciting time of the year to be watching all of these webcams because we're, we're seeing uh, the birds beginning to nest. Some of the eagles uh, on the cams have already hatched some young, like in Channel Islands National Park. So um, really a great time of the year to be tuning in. And there's a lot more excitement to come with with uh, ospreys and, and peregrine falcons, owls, a whole bunch of other things are going to be uh, nesting uh, quite soon. So thanks again for uh, 
for joining us this afternoon. And we will talk to you soon on explore.org. Thank Thanks, you. Mike.